Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to me. That's um that's what I want to get into. I actually want to get into that. And you touched on this the last time we spoke, just a little bit briefly, about the chakra and the woman being anti clockwise and the man being clockwise. Um and how if they come together, if they can come together synced in and with open chakras and really complement each other, that's the highest level uh, of, of spiritual consciousness. Uh, so I want to I want to touch on that. But first, uh, for the people listening who don't know or have been confused of uh, or about what a chakra is, uh, I'll give you my take and, and I'll let Phoenix give her take. My understanding is there's seven main chakras and a chakra is the bridge that connects our our, our spiritual uh, consciousness to our physical body and so we take stuff in we take energy in positive and negative and we we uh, 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 precipitate that also give that back out it's going in and out that energy positive and negative they can close uh, they can be reopened we, we, there's practices to heal them, that type of thing. But from our crown to our foundation, uh, our, our feet, uh, there's there's seven stock, uh, uh, chakras between that. Uh, last week, Phoenix also, or two weeks ago, Phoenix also touched on being able to heal uh, the the uh, the foundation. I would say the foundation sock, sh- uh, chakra by walking, by connecting. Uh, to nature walking barefooted barefoot on the earth on the surface on the ground and and that's one way to open up that chakra and heal it so am i on point phoenix or you want to expound on that yeah you're totally on point you're totally on point the chakras are the chakra openings there's seven main ones but there's we literally essentially can have hundreds of chakras you've got points at your elbow, you have points at your shoulder, you know, you have points at your eyes. And and if you get into EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique, you can see they will tap on other chakras, you know, here, 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 here. You have a lot of them, but your main vortexes, if you want to call them that way, and they have a spin. And what's really interesting is the planet is on a certain orbit and it has this spin. All of our DNA strands they have found have that same spin naturally now when we get out of alignment it's like throwing the whole thing off axis it wobbles that spin becomes shaky it's not a a regular spin so that's when we can actually have the wobble or what we call the reverse spin which causes dis-ease or disease in our body so it's real interesting It, it, it is it's just intriguing because you know we're actually spirit that have manifested into this physical body, but yet the physical body isn't even solid. Even though we seem to see it as solid, it's really not. We're continually moving and spinning. So when you get into uh, remote viewing, how that works, and we know a lot of the the governments like Russian governments and different Chinese governments have been using this for a long, long time, the remote viewing to protect them from enemies to see what they're doing. And all it is, is you have to get in sync with your, the spin of your DNA in sync with the spin of the planet. And you literally can feel that if you pause for a minute, you put your feet on the ground and you really feel. And since I've been a child, I could literally hear the spin of the earth. It has a sound to me. It's like a ohm sound. It's, it's a, it's a spin, especially at night when I would go to bed, I'd always hear that sound. And it's literally the sound of the planet. The sound, the planet makes a sound on its orbit. Yes, I've heard that. So, yes. So, so remote viewing is nothing more than simply because now we're all enclosed in that same spin. We're all on this planet. So we're on the same orbit. Right. And our cells are the same. So technically our consciousnesses can connect at any time. And we do it all the time, not being aware of it. Right. For example, there's times when you might think of your mother. Yes. And you think of your mother and in your mind's eye, you see her in a certain place. You might see her surrounded by certain colors and shapes and just, just vaguely, you're not even consciously hardly thinking that way, 
But what's actually happening, if you knew where she was at the time, you're seeing exactly where she is. And if wow. you even, even tap in deeper into her, you're feeling her feelings. Wow. Wow. You know, that, that's interesting. Uh, before I get, but forget this point, I want the people to know that between the male and the female, uh, the corresponding chakras are polar opposites, meaning uh, uh, there, there's a receiving and there's a giving chakra or corresponding. So my receiving chakra would be uh, a giving chakra in the female and vice versa. Right. Yes. Right. So is that correct? <laughs> so It is. Yeah. And it's beautiful because as you move up the seven chakras, the root chakra is a male chakra. Yes. The foundation is a male chakra. The, the sacral or womb chakra is a female chakra. Then the next chakra, which is your solar plexus, your, your energetic core is a male chakra again. Then your heart chakra is a female chakra. Then you get to the throat chakra. Again, it's a male chakra, the speaking out. Yes. You get up to the third eye, the visionary, that's a female chakra. So, so they're pinging. It's beautiful. They're pinging, ding, 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 all the way up. That's the, what they call the kundalini. And the kundalini yes. is when, when those are in perfect sync, give and take. It's like, like infinity. It is literally infinity, the way that the chakras move together when you're in sync. So our whole goal, and I think we agree on this, our whole goal is to, to bring information to the people of the earth to heal these things within us so that our chakras are resonating properly so that we can move as a, as a protective force. That, yeah, I there's mean, a lot of yeah. things. I, I think, I feel like we have a lot of things to discover, but, but yeah. it's mostly untangling, untangling natural law with what we've messed up. You know, we've messed it up. And yeah. it's kind of really what we're trying to do is untangle all the strands of, of the tangled mess that we've got ourselves in right now and yeah. get back to nature, to what we are meant to be. What did we come here to do this way? Why are we split like this? Isn't it because once, so, so let's say we, this never happened. Let's say we were all just, you know, uh, like, like some of the other beings you hear on other planets that are neither male or female, da, da, da. What if we were that way? Right. Where would there be any challenge or any spiritual growth or any learning to sync with the other sex and to become whole again? Right. It wouldn't be there. Right. So when and you I, look at that yeah. way, our spirit wants wants that 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 way, that lesson to be able to ascend, which if you start looking, um, you've heard for years and years that the secret of the white gold, they call it. Mm -hmm. And for years, you know, I mean, people would be, you know, be murdered trying to find it. I mean, there was a secret. There was something they were looking for and they thought it was, you know, something that they could create. Um, and, you know, they were alchemists trying to make these mixes and all this stuff. And what they actually found out was that that was a white powder that was created in the pineal gland when a man and woman came together with the sexual act and their, 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 um, chakras were all in line it actually created a, a kundalini rising that created a white powder in the pineal gland that literally could be transmuted into anything anything wow. yeah I but what that. they also found was that that same-sex people together or somebody individually could never create that they could create wow. things but they could never create that transmutation of the secret of the white gold right so you go back in some of all those ancient, ancient scripts and all those carvings that they found in the tombs and all that stuff. It shows that every single time it'll show a man and a woman, it'll show the serpent on the pole and it'll show, you know, the, them carefully tending it over the fire. And it's like, it's a controlled thing. It's not just, you know, it's something that they consciously worked on together. It was not just some random thing. Right. So when you look at it that way and you see how, this society has tangled things up so bad. It's like we have to pick one strand at a time to try to figure out where where to you know where to unravel the mess and get it straight again. Is how I see it. I, don't right. know. I, I agree. I agree. Um, it, it's like a uh, it's like we're part of an experiment <laughs> where the Almighty yeah. yeah just sent us out free will 
uh, sent us out. Uh, we're, we're, we're gathering information from different perspectives, you know, and we're bringing information back. And it's a healing process also. It's a school to learn and teach. It's a healing process. And that's the main thing. I think we have to heal uh, men, women, uh, everyone has to heal to get back. We'll find our way back to the source. Uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, that's that's what I believe, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's a process. And, you know, it's, it's it, 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 and for that reason, there's, there's for that reason, that's why we, we shouldn't judge. You know, we shouldn't judge. I, I believe in discernment, but we shouldn't judge. We shouldn't be so hard on ourselves and others. And, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. I, um, uh, I like to watch documentaries about people who have visited the afterlife, who have died and come back. And to a person, they've all said that um, they were able to see their life from beginning to end. And it wasn't about what anyone did to them. It was about what they sent out, what they did to others, but mainly what they did to themselves. Uh, judging them, judging themselves, and, uh, and 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 some people wanted to come back. They had a choice to come back or to to move on. And, and a lot of people, you know, decided to come back. Um, but yeah, we shouldn't have a uh, guilt, regret, judge ourselves. It's just you know uh, we have to be somewhat well, not somewhat. We have to be babes. You know, a babe does not judge themselves. Um, they're just open, you know, they're, they're, they're geniuses, they're open and they're giving and that's what we got to get back to. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. It's, there's a book that's been my favorite. Anybody that's wanting to heal, like really heal some, some of those parts of themselves. We've been programmed to judge through the religious structures that we've grown up in the cultural structures the society We've been right. trained to judge. This is good. This is bad. This is this. This is that. Right. Right. And we do live in a world of positive and negative. Everything, everything has a yin and yang side to it. That's true. It wouldn't be a, this world without it. I mean, everything. Right. So, you know, there's a part of it, but there's a, there's a book and this book is available to purchase uh, on Amazon or on audible. It's, there's an audio book as well. And it's called uh, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Now, it sounds like a religious book, but it's far from it. When you read that book, it is so incredibly freeing. And it is so deep. You literally, even if you're used to reading deep things, you literally have to take a little at a time because it wow. is so incredibly deep. Wow. And I'll just share with you. I have seen some people. I've seen one young man. That was, I mean, he was messed up. He was into all kinds of things, into meth. I mean, I mean, he was like, you know, really down the road. And he, somebody convinced him to listen to that book. And this young man changed overnight. It was the most incredible thing I have ever experienced. Because it literally freed him from those self-judgments. From those judgments of the situations around him that were causing him to go into that dark place. Right. Right. It, yeah, it's gotta... the most incredible. I mean, I mean, there's a set of three books and it, it is the most incredible. The, uh, the audible book um, is very condensed, but he told me he listened to that audible book like 12 times over and over. And each time he said he heard something new. So there's, you know, we have things like this with people that have actually had, you know, spiritual downloads and access. Uh, Neville Goddard, he has some of the same things, you know, but but the conversations with God is really for today is really helps you through some of the things that are going on today to help you release the judgments, basically, and just just be right. And that's where it's hard for us to do is is for us to to just be, to go back to the inner child, which is the soul or the spirit. The soul is, is our inner child. And, yeah. you know, yeah. it's hard to go back because 
you know, we have all these programs that if someone acts a certain way, it must be this. You right. see the judgments right away. Right. right. Whereas if we, if we actually could feel them, if we actually could feel into their soul and hear what they're saying, I have a, I have a, a plaque on my wall here and it says, uh, people need loving the most when they deserve it the least. Oh. And a lot of times when somebody does hurtful things, they're actually crying out for love. They're actually crying out for somebody to help them on a spiritual level. You know, you, you say something very interesting. Uh, we got into a topic. Uh, a few of us got into a topic in regards to that uh, yesterday. Now, when you said the people that hurt the most need the most love, um, you know, a lot of people have a problem with that. And I, I, I'll be honest, that's been a struggle for me um, because sometimes, and I guess this it reminds me of the story of the, uh, the prodigal son. And mm -hmm. so um, sometimes when you see, you see people who you feel aren't as disciplined or wasting their lives away, they get a lot of sympathy. They get a lot of leniency. Uh, people empathize with them. But the person who uh, who seemingly, seemingly has it all together hasn't uh, seemingly made a lot of mistakes or doesn't have any apparent addictions or anything like that uh pretty much has it together seemingly if they hit a roadblock or stumble they don't get as much leniency or understanding and i've i've always struggled with that uh i really have i've always struggled with that and i think a lot of people struggle with that and so uh you know so what what are your thoughts on that how how do we I guess to get past that, we just gotta, we gotta release, you know, how do we get past that? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that some souls come here stronger and some souls come here on a, on a weaker level for growth? I can believe that. Yeah. If I believe this is a school and I believe in, in reincarnation, uh, yeah, I, I gotta believe that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. in that case, doesn't it make sense that the ones that, have it all together as you're saying or they know or they aren't those the stronger souls that are literally kind of expected to lift up the weaker ones or to i don't know it's just a thought that came to me as you were as you were speaking right i mean that makes sense but i guess when we get into our <laughs> I yeah i mean it makes sense but when we get into our feelings and the ego yeah we yeah, yeah. We, yeah we get blinded yeah I guess, but, yeah we're but, just like it's not fair right right <laughs> right, right. It's like not fair. like oh man yeah, like the son that did the right thing in the prodigal son story, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he he was the same way. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So that's that's well, something. And, and the thing yeah. is, is if everybody was whole, if you're whole, you don't need a, a any healing. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. I don't know. You know, everybody has growth to do, but definitely there's people that need more healing than others, and so naturally in nature there would be those that are the healers that are there for that right right but now when when you know those of us have down times you know you do tend to feel really alone because you're expected to be the healer right <laughs> you know what i mean exactly you're, you're the you're the go-to person exactly and so yeah, so when you hit yeah. a rock then you're just like whoa but right. you know um i found that that it is really hard to read when you hit a rock. It's hard to relate to somebody just because you've been there all your life. You're the one that's been the giver or the healer. And I think that that's natural. I don't think that's unnatural. I think that just, you know, whether male or female, there's people that are here as healers and people that are here as, you know, souls that are here to be raised and uplifted and to heal at, at a deeper level. I agree. I but, agree. I've, I've found that nature is the best healer. When you when you are a healer and you need healing, you go back to Mother Nature, and that's where you get your healing. 
Right. You ground. I mean, go on, go camping, go out, sleep outside. Right. You do something like that where you really, really ground yourself into nature. Personally, I found that that's like the most healing you can do because um, if you're here as a healer, it's a little hard for somebody to heal when you hit your rock, your hard spots. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I agree. I agree. So let's dive into this. The seven chakras. Let, let's let's dive into it. Let's see here. So we explain to the people what what the chakra is. So we'll start with uh, the first chakra, the base, the root. Positive pole or giving mode in male body. Negative pole or receiving mode in female body. The first chakra in a male or female is situated at the perineum. This chakra has a positive pole in male and hence is a physical manifestation and its outward shape. It is in the giving mode. The first chakra in the female in the receiving mode as it has a negative pole. Now that's interesting. That's interesting. I know that's that's true. I agree with this totally. Well, it doesn't matter if I agree with it. It, it, it's, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of men have issues. And I don't know, and, and I'm not sure where we get this from. You know, maybe we could do a deep dive on that. But we, we sometimes have issues um, with women wanting to receive uh, from a base level, manifestation level. Uh, a manifestation, I take it as something tangible, right? So, a lot of men have a problem with this. But I always felt like this was natural for for a man to give, uh, to provide, and a woman to be in the receiving uh, position when it comes to that. Uh, I think more men could accept that wholeheartedly if they understood the chakras and understand that just be patient <laughs> your time to receive is coming too <laughs> where she gives naturally right right and so uh personally i've always felt weird when a woman attempted or or did give me something tangible uh offer to take me to dinner uh just you know offer to 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 give me money to start a business i've always felt weird or rejected it all together it just felt unnatural um and i never really understood why why that was but it makes sense you know it makes sense but what are your thoughts on that the, the first chakra well you can't talk about that without talking about the second one because the first chakra the sacral chakra and the second chakra, or the first chakra, the root chakra, the second one is the sacral chakra. Mm -hmm. So again, when you come to the sacral chakra or the womb chakra, it reverses. That chakra on a man is the open receiving one. That chakra on the woman is the giving one, the womb. Right. Everything comes out of the womb. So let's say the man is giving on the root chakra level, but what that is supposed to do is ping the next chakra to have the woman give from that chakra. And it's really interesting because the giving from the root chakra is a different level than the giving from the sacral chakra that a woman does. Wow. Wow. So when you really think about that, again, you know, you and I have talked about a lot of stuff, but so, you know, even, even in the, even in the natural form of, of birthing a child, the man plants the seed, it pings to the womb chakra and the woman manifests, it takes a while, she manifests, and then she brings forth that physical manifestation to the man. Right, right. So it's that way in every area, energetically, you know, the man, the man pings the first chakra, then it, it, it actually manifests that a woman wants to give back. Right. The woman instinctively wants to give back, but she gives back from a nurturing space. Exactly. From a you know, supporting space. Okay. You made me feel safe. The root chakra is all about feeling safe. Mm 
and rooted and grounded. And if you run, if, and I know we talked about this as before, you talked about it being a certain kind of man that could actually bring out something in a wounded feminine. Now the wounded feminine stores in the second chakra, the sacral chakra or the womb. Right. right. That's where all of our pain are. I mean, for the most part, that's where our pain begins. And then it moves to the next female chakra, which is the heart. And that's where they, they talk about having a broken heart, but it always starts in the womb. The yeah. womb was not reverenced. The womb was violated. Uh, you know, the room, womb was disrespected, whatever it was, it always starts there. So when, when a man is able to make a woman feel really safe, he's the root foundation. There you go. That only then, only then is when she can ping from that next chakra and give him back for making her feel safe, for containing her. The whole basis of that, that root chakra is the containment. There you go. There so you if go. you don't have that foundation, you know, <laughs> you see guys that they, they don't even try on that foundational level. They don't even right. try to understand that. They're just going to go, you know, right, hit the higher chakras and, you know, you know, get her, you know, mental up here or her heart or whatever, but they right. forget about the foundation. So that relationship is never going to work. Because right. the foundation is missing. We have to realize anything we build does start at the foundation. Everything, everything. And this is, I think so, this is connected so, to, um, sorry, I think this is connected to when we, we say the woman is mirroring the man, wants to mirror the man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I can't saying? stress enough. I can't stress enough as a feminine energy how important and critically important it is to make for her to feel safe in her interaction and in whatever level it is in working with a male energy. Because wow. if that's not there, you can try to work. You can, you can, you know, try to give back from the heart chakra. Generally, if she doesn't feel safe on the foundation, it's not going to be coming from the womb because the womb is going to be locked up. But still, the woman activate is on the heart chakra and the mental, the, the third eye chakra. That's the female chakras as well. So generally, she's going to be, you know, maybe doing stuff for you on those levels. But inside of her, there's no security because the foundation isn't even there. It's locked. Oh, she, so you're not, so the, yeah, it makes sense. So the man's not getting her all. Everything she's capable of giving. Oh, no, she's not. And the, and the thing is, is you know, you know, when we feel safe, when we feel safe, there's nothing that we won't do. There is nothing we will not do to see our man successful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But mom, when there's that, when that. there's <laughs> that, yeah, and that's the, that's the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. It's just the, the, what it feels like in a female energy when that happens, when you literally know that you are safe. This man is not going to violate your trust. He's not going to violate, you know, he's going to understand, you know, that your feminine energy is going to be crazy. Sometimes your hormones and your, your emotions and everything are coursing through your body, but he's okay. He's just going to be like, you know, a wall. He's, he's okay. He, he's just like, it's a safe space. He doesn't need to say anything. And that's something I was thinking about too, is a lot of men hear us talking about this, but they have no idea any examples on containing that energy or how to make her feel safe because they're just like huh huh well what do i do i'm gonna go fight for you oh no that's not what it's about it's not about oh. fighting oh. it's a whole lot different it's on a a, a core level of feeling oh. safe energetically right just being a rock yeah. and, it, and, it, and it's in and, and really really a foundation with, with the feminine energy is communication. Without the proper communication, she can never feel safe. I don't care what he does. And I think men tend to not communicate or, you know, in general, a lot of men don't, they're not communicators as much, but to actually set the foundation to where they're going to ping the womb chakra first, which then will move to opening the heart chakra they have to communicate. Yeah, that's. I mean, you said something profound there, and I, I think that is that is true. Communication is key, but I think there's a, a, a disconnect in that because we communicate in different ways. I think men yes. men are bottom line. 
Like, with bottom line, just give me, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just give me the, the nuts and bolts of it. What, what, what are you saying? And, and sometimes, man, y'all go from here to over here, over here, you know, over here, yeah. and, and we're like, we're like, <laughs> I mean, I think um, the comedian he rest, may rest in peace, uh, Patrice O'Neill, tells a joke about that. So let me ask you, okay, by show of hands, guys, uh, how many of you, your woman tells wonderful stories? <laughs> the guy holding his woman and she's cold? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 okay, no. Hey, you, 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 yeah, great story. No, well, let's see that hand held high, bro. Told you. And he's looking at his white couple, right? And she's just like, but she don't want to look like a villain. And so she just, but she don't tell good stories. She just, she don't. What's your name? Dave, what's your name? How are you? How are you? This is true. When you call Dave from another room, Dave, immediately, <laughs> he goes, ugh. What the f- what does she want now? Dave, you want to hear what happened to me today? You be like, oh, oh, oh. I make my girl tell me the end of a story first. Before I invest any more time into listening to the rest of it. You want to hear what happened to me today? No, what happened? Somebody got shot. All right, go ahead. Try to tell the story. Starts off wrong. You know my friend Diane, right? Uh. No, I don't really. I don't. You know Diane? I don't know Diane. I, I don't. You, now I gotta tell you another two hour story so you know who Diane is. Remember, 10 years ago I made you go to a party you didn't wanna go to? And I introduced you to some people you didn't care about? Well, Diane was one of them, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. You don't remember, you're just saying you remember. So I could tell the story faster. Well, why don't you tell uh, the story faster, sweetie? Who... Who got shot? Did Diane get shot? No, did she, did she shoot somebody? No. Well, why did you say Diane? Because we were talking and she don't like guns and I don't like guns and I... And I think they should make a rocket ship and shoot all guns into another... Who got shot? <laughs> Nobody, if you're gonna yell at me, forget it. <laughs> oh, won't tell the story, but you make me feel bad when I saw it, And so, how do we... Cause that's the found, man. We spend a lot of time on this root chakra, cause that's the foundation. How do we get past that? Does the woman <laughs> need to change a bit? Does the man need to be more patient? Like, how do we how do we pass that? No, I'll, I'll just I'll just speak to you from my perspective. Neither of us need to change. We just need to accept mm. who we are. I wow. see that in myself all the time. I'll start out saying one thing and it's just like, you can't help it. That's the female energy. You're here, you're here. And, and it's like, as these energies flow through you, it's just like, ding, 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 ding you know, all these things and, and, right. <laughs> and all we need. And here's the thing. So the man sitting over here thinking we're coming and asking you to help me, you know, and, and we're trying, you're trying to figure out where she's coming from because she's here and here and here and here and here. Right. Right. All we need you to do is be a strong wall. Go. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. We don't need you to fix what we're talking about. <laughs> we need to vent against the wall. <laughs> and every now and I'm then, fellas, and every now and then you got to say, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say, Is you that don't. right? Is that right? Are you serious? Are you serious? Wow. Okay. You yeah. don't need to say anything more, guys. You don't need to say anything more. I'm serious. And, and now today, let's get into the the 
in, in that regard into the technology age where we're texting, we're, it's, there's very little actual conversation. Whereas years ago, if you were connecting with somebody, if you were dating somebody, you were face to face, right? You were, think about this. You were integrating all five senses when you were dating, when you were holding hands, whatever you were integrating those. Now look at this. Here it is a flat screen. If you're even doing FaceTime, right? How much are you actually missing? How are you going to communicate this way? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's an energy wise, there's a blockage. Oh, there is, there is. But now, oh. like, I'll give you an example about texting and you, I know you're going to see this because as a female energy, okay. So our only communication with a male energy, let's say is to text. Right. All right. So this energy is still tearing through us here, 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 here. And we're going to be sending you texts like this long about this, 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 this. And you're just like, oh, shut it off. Right, if right. you don't understand, if you don't understand how it works and what, you're not required to do anything but go, uh-huh, smiley face. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't need to do anything. But, but, <laughs> but I know guys, I know guys who, who say, who jokingly say, we don't read all that text, like that whole that whole story. We don't read it, and and right. uh, and some some women, even if they don't say it, some women will be like, if he doesn't answer or respond right, the woman will respond. I know you didn't read that text, <laughs> you know, like she kind of knows, really? oh, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <sighs> yeah. I, I don't know. But I think it's, but we got. I but you're right. We got to accept each other. We gotta accept each other. Yeah. And I, I think it, it may be as different how we grew up. If if a woman grew up around a lot of girls, you know, she gets a lot more I've seen this a lot. I've seen this where if there's a family of girls, they tend to be a lot more um touchy with emotions. Um if a girl grows up in a in around a lot of boys, she's used to that. She knows she doesn't even expect them to read all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, right. I know right. that when I send along, I'm just, I'm just sending this in. Literally what it does is it bounces that energy off of something to where it can come back organized in my poor brain. I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, <laughs> a lot of women wouldn't say this because they don't want to, they don't want to feel vulnerable because we are right. vulnerable. Yes. We have all this energy. We have a downloads of energy that I believe are, you know, universally tapped in because of the womb. The womb is like the most powerful energy downloader or source that brings, brings it to the planet. You know, it's the only way we can even get here, Wow! but it comes through in such amounts of information in such random ways. <laughs> I mean, right. I, I grew up. I grew up around boys all my life. I don't expect. I know. I don't how they. I don't expect them to to try to unravel because that's just not how it works. <laughs> right. I mean, you you can't predict. Uh, you can't predict the moon. Like it's it's ever changing. Um, yeah. And I think where men mess up, we start living or uh, or or yeah, living on the vibration or the frequency of the woman, which is a mistake. We, we, we get yeah, emotional. He needs to, stay, he, needs to yeah. stay, he needs to stay in the sun while she is in the moon, which waxes and wanes. The sun is steady. The yes. sun comes up and the sun isn't going to wax and wane. It's yeah. Sometimes there's clouds over it. That's, that's like when the man goes into his space, he's got to go into his space. And I learned that growing up with brothers and having seven boys of my own. Right. The, the, sometimes the sun has to go behind the cloud. And then when it comes out, it shines brighter than ever. Yeah, you're rejuvenated. Yeah. But the yeah. moon, the moon is always waxing and waning, and it's on. Yeah. You know, just uh, you know, and that's just that's just the tides actually follow the moon. All the tides on the planet follow the moon, and the woman follows the moon and the tides. So it's it's this it's this energy like this. So let's say the woman's energy is like this, and the man man's energy is just you know, it's 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 a like sine waves. If you see the different sine waves, that's kind of how it is. Yes. As yeah. long as we understand it and we can sync those, those waves together, that's when, you know, we can heal the planet. I believe. I, I agree. I agree. 
So let's step into the second chakra, sacral or navel chakra, positive pole or giving mode in the female body. Here we go, fellas. Negative pole or receiving uh, mode in male body. The second chakra in the male body is in the receiving mode due to its negative pole. Let me touch on that. When we, when we say negative, this doesn't this isn't a, a bad connotation. That's not what we're saying. Uh, you know, we got protons and neutrons, um, and so we're talking about energy, receiving and 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 giving. Uh, but it's not it's not a bad thing when we say negative. The same is in the giving mode in the female's body, as it has a positive mode or a positive pole. The second chakra is the center of all emotions in a body and that's why a female is more emotionally charged than a male to understand this better read this instance often we may notice that women develop feelings and lots of emotions after making love with their partners due to the sexual intercourse the male penetrates with his lingam his positive pole to yoni the negative pole of female then after some time, the energy reaches the second chakra, which is the positive pole of a female. And that's how, after lovemaking, deep emotions get activated in a woman's body. Wow, wow, wow. So, wow, that's, that's heavy. Um, but at the same time, because the man's pole on the second chakra is the negative the minus it drains it ten, after that act it tends to drain his emotions so he just feels like blah <laughs> do you notice right, <laughs> right. How, he fall, how he falls asleep yeah exactly and that's because <laughs> and, and see this is just like like the batteries the positive and negative every chakra lines up that way so if yeah. we if we don't understand this, we're we're gonna not figure out what's wrong. Oh, I'm, I must be something wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. We have to accept ourselves who we are. We have to realize we're not messing up. Right. Everybody's like, oh, we're messing up. No, you're not messing up. Yeah, you're learning. Right. Yeah. yeah, you're learning. That needs to be man. That needs to be pushed out there and broadcasted more. That we're not messing up, man. We're, we're learning. Uh, right. We'll, we'll get it right eventually. You know, we don't have to do it all. And, and, you know, you know, back to that about, you know, I've seen that like with my brothers, you know, I, I was there with them, you know, through their dating experience, their, their experiences where they were going to get married and a girl would reject them or this and that. And I had to keep reminding them, you know, no, you didn't mess up. You didn't mess up. And the thing is, is the, the feminine chakras, the way they are, it's going to activate those chakras. If, if, okay, let's say, let's say um, my brother, for example, you know, he was rejected a couple times by a girl that he really liked. Okay. But what he didn't realize, he's like, oh, I just messed up. You know, I'm going to go into depression type thing. What he didn't realize is that what actually was happening was the polarity of those chakras wasn't in sync yet. Maybe hers didn't have the right amount of charge versus his. But if he would persevere, it would correct itself. That's wow. what I think, what I believe, and I'm just saying this from observation from my own. If a man perseveres, it's healing. It's the healing cycle between those two chakras. And I think, I don't think, re, I would say this, rejection doesn't even exist. And guys, guys would go, what? But it doesn't exist. It's simply trying. It's you've got to figure out how to polarize the chakras. It's not rejection. It's just imbalance between the two chakras. Right, right. So this is <clears throat> I've heard throughout the years that if if a man approaches a woman and she turns him down, she says she's not interested. If he's persistent, she will eventually give in to a date. <laughs> is this is this true? Well, if he's doing his work, okay. here's the thing. If she's not interested, remember a woman is very intuitive and she can feel how in sync he is. 
And if her heart is not, if, if nothing he has done or showed does anything to ping the heart chakra, there's nothing in sync. Now, let's say he sits back and goes, okay, under, in understanding this polarization, he goes, okay, what can I do to strengthen my chakras, the male chakras on him, that every other chakra is male? Right. What am I doing to strengthen those male chakras to ping the opposing energy like a battery? Look at a battery. When it's running out, you turn your flashlight on, it's running out. That's what's happening. It's, right. it's a weak battery. So I believe that the only reason that happens is, and he may be attracted to her because he sees strengths in the opposing chakras. But if his chakra isn't as strong as her opposing chakra, there is going to be a little disconnect. But that can be corrected again. You know, yeah. I see, I've seen my brothers, I've seen, I've seen, you know, guys get hurt so bad and, and, you know, saying, oh, you know, this woman is so cruel. No, it's just a misunderstanding. No, there's, I don't believe there's anything, such thing as rejection. Wow. Rejection wow. is simply an idea that we have misconstrued, you know, believing that, oh, we were rejected and it, it's something wrong with us. No, there's nothing wrong with us. We just have to, balance the poles and yeah. yeah so it's more of a misfire you think right right yeah okay 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 i can see that okay wow and there's a there's a there's a website called chakraboosters.com this is pretty intriguing because <laughs> if you have a weak chakra let's just say the male has you know maybe he has a hard time speaking that's a male chakra if he has a hard time approaching her and saying what he what he really thinks or feels, that's weak. He can actually purchase the chakraboosters.com actually made these these chakra tattoos. They're temporary tattoos that you stick on a chakra. Now, what's really interesting is where you place them. They tell you where to place them to open that chakra. It's got the color. It's got the symbolism and the vibration that that chakra needs to be, become stronger. Literally, when you place it on a chakra, you will see how weak or how strong that chakra is. If it's strong, that temporary tattoo lasts for quite a while. If it's weak, it will literally melt off. You're like your body absorbs that. Wow. It is incredible. That's wow. that's a tool that I've incredible. seen a number of people use, especially if they're stuck and like like can't move forward in business or something. Generally, right. that's your solar plexus chakra for your for business and things like that. And wow. so, you know, we have we have tons of tools in 2022 that, you know, we can overcome these things. We don't need to be stuck in this mode of, and rejection is a harsh, it's a harsh thing to have stored in your body. It's a trauma, but again, it's a belief system. If you believe you were rejected, it's going to plant itself in certain areas of your body, causing a dis-ease in that area because you felt rejected. Yeah. It's all about perspective. Um, it's all about what you tell yourself, right? It, it is, the brain is amazing. Like, if you get rejected by a woman or a job or, or anything, uh, any situation, instead of saying you you were not good enough, you know, that's that could take you down, <clears throat> depending on how you're built. But if you say they're missing out on a good thing, man, that has a whole different perspective and it, it it changes how you perceive yourself in in your entire body. Yeah. And it should be it should be instead of it taking us down, it sh we should use it as a springboard to strengthen the things that are weak. That's to yeah. strengthen things that need to be strengthened and to to become better, to yeah. grow, you know. Yeah, it's okay to say I'm weak in this area and not let it take you down. Work on it. Uh, exactly. Nobody not there's not one of us that can be strong in all areas. It's impossible. That's why we need each other. We cannot be strong in all areas. Third chakra, the solar plexus. Positive pole or given mode in male body. Negative pole or receiving mode in female body. The third chakra in a man has a positive pole because of this. Men are born to make home and shelter and they actively use this energy to make their tribe. And they create boundaries within their tribe. That's definitely me. Men are born to be warrior, whereas in a female's body, 
the third chakra has a negative pole and is hence receiving mode in, in, in receiving mode but in 21st century's lifestyle women need to work a lot and manage everything by themselves so sometimes the chakra is becoming very active also in women okay. and that's why you feel some women have less feminist quality <clears throat> and some have more wow wow <sighs> Is that a good thing? That last part is that a is that an unbalance? I, I mean, we know we will adapt to whatever situation we have to adapt to. So I'm not yeah. I'm not blaming women. You got to do you know some women have to do whatever you have to do. You you have to survive. But we're gonna have to pay for that in the long run. You think? Do we need to correct that? Well, again, let's say a woman is ping and strong on that chakra. Her womb chakra is going to be very weak. Because the, the one chakra, can, you can't have two chakras side by side that are going to be strong because it's throwing the, the balance out. You, you have to have that figure eight. It's got to flow that way between the two chakras. So I'll just, you know, from personal experience, I'll just, you know, share a little bit of, you know, how I found. And anytime I've done a chakra test, my solar plexus is like my weakest chakra mm. as far as pushing out because I, I have a hard time on my own pushing forward that's just not me by nature even in my um astrology charts the feminine is way high and the masculine is low that's just by nature how i came to this planet now not everybody does right but the hardest thing for me was to keep the balance or activate it enough for me as a single mother to be able to move things forward so the, I worked with the chakra boosters lady in a lot. I mean, I had, you know, consultations with her every month for a long, long time. And she just kept telling me, you know, you need to get, you need to get on your, your, uh, but it, it was out of, it's so out of character for me. It's, it's just hard for me to do that. Now I can, I can get into the nurturing chakras all day long. That's me. That's natural. That's just how, how I feel, you know, it's just a natural thing. Right. But to get into that that masculine chakra to push outward, it's just it, it that has and I've I've wondered. It's so interesting. I'm glad you're reading this because it's making me understand a little bit more the dynamic and why it's so hard for me to get into that chakra. I, I just about can't. The heart chakra. Let's see. Positive pole or giving mode in female body. Negative pole or receiving mode in male body. The fourth chakra in the male is in the receiving mode. And in women, it is in the giving mode due to its positive pole. This is why the physical manifestation of this chakra, which are breast, are outward in the female body. This is also why the heart chakra is popularly known as a woman's chakra. And that's why for women, it is easier to connect with the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, so, so I spoke to uh, one, one of uh, my friends and, and you come in it. I spoke to Jay Watts. Uh, he was on the channel and we were talking about how <laughs> men or, uh, or males, you don't even have to be men yet, boys. I was a boy, experienced heartbreak. And I knew I never wanted to experience that again. It's like, and, and he had the same story, right? Like, like one is enough. And <laughs> right. And so we were like, wow, but with women, you experience that feeling over and over again. And we were like, man, well, why is that? Like, and we, to him, I kind of knew why it was, but with him, he was like, man, that, that just makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, from a male perspective, <laughs> not thinking outside of yourself it makes no sense like why would someone do that but it t it makes total sense if you're the woman or or you can kind of perceive yourself in the woman see why she does that and understands her chakra and, and what mode is in with the heart uh, yeah and so we spoke on being a protector of your children. Maybe something in that kicks in. I, I, I don't know, the heart chakra when it comes to, you know, your, your offspring. But, um, hmm. 
That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because the the heart chakra um, on us, if if we close the heart chakra to avoid heartbreak, we create a whole host of health problems. Uh-huh. I mean, that's something that you don't dare do. So your heart is open and raw all the time. Your children can can cause tremendous grief to you, tremendous heart pain. You know, think back to that time where you're talking about heartbreak. Think about having to go through that over and over and over, but you cannot shut it down or your whole body is going to go into disease. Right. Right. Yeah. And, I, and it's, it's funny you say that. I'm just thinking of a few women uh, that, that have, uh, I think, have done that and they experience a lot of ailments. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. it, it, terrible. I've been there. I can tell you both sides. I know what happened. That's why I had the massive heart attack, I believe, when I was so young. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's it's the body trying to open that because as a feminine energy, you can't even live if your heart chakra is closed. You're gonna, it's going to kill you. Wow. So wow. it's like <laughs> either live through the pain or die <laughs> with right. one or the other. I mean, you know. Right, right. I don't, I don't know why it's that way, but yeah. So when a, when a, well maybe you have uh, an example, but when a woman's heart chakra is closed uh, or bruised and needs healing, how does she get that healed or reopen that chakra? You know, there's a there's a, a lady that has a channel. Her name is Teal Swan. I think mm-hmm. I've maybe shared that with you. Yeah. She has a whole thing. She goes through every single chakra in your body and tells you what foods, what colors. You can even wear certain colors to open them. Um, you know, herbs. Or each There's ones that sink to each chakra, and it's a process. You know, the heart chakra is green. It's the color green. It's healing. It's the life, you know, the life of the, of the female body. Um, the womb is is the creation force, but the heart is the life itself. So right. you know, there's things. Um, there's there's one product that I I tell people all the time, whether they're men or women, because of how healing it is to to the life force, the blood, the heart. You know, everything. Our life blood itself is from the heart, and that's a, a product called Chlor Oxygen. It's a chlorophyll. And I can't even tell you some of the things I've seen in, in helping people with all sorts of things. It literally is a very brilliant green. Chloroxygen is, is they just take a, 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 it's from stinging nettles and they concentrate it down so much. And you take that internally and it literally helps release all those things, you know, through the, through the body. You can even test somebody's oxygen and their oxygen, their blood oxygen shows really low. You give them a dose of that and you test it 15, 20 minutes later and it goes up three, four points on the, on the meter. So, wow. you know, again, our heart chakra is, is our whole oxygen to our, our system, whether you're male or female. It's just that they operate differently. One is the plus and one is the minus. And, you know, wow. you think about it, the woman, you know, she longs to, to nurture and give from the heart. That's, that's, that's an instinct that every baby girl is born with. They wow. want to give from their heart. That's just instinctive. It's natural. Um, but again, when we talk about rejection, let's say she tries to give, she tries to give and you know, she's mistreated or she's traumatized or she feels like it's thrown back in her face, her offers to give. She, she might sense rejection and have that same, um, that same scenario that we talked about earlier that the male would face if he feels rejected, but in a different way to where I think that's what closes her heart chakra down. You know, if that happens over and over and over, she just wants to give, she wants to give. And, you know, she might be accused of something or, you know, you never know, but misunderstood. And I think that's what closes it down. So if that's what closes it down, you know, her being able to give and and being received, her giving being received will open it back up as well. The fifth chakra, throat chakra, 
positive pole or giving mode in male body, negative pole or receiving mode in female body. Now, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is going to be controversial. Man, this is this is where they call me chauvinistic, probably. But I didn't create this. <laughs> <laughs> this positive pole fifth chakra in a male's body is the reason why the majority of the world's renowned poets, scientists, creators are men. It is the voice or throat chakra, and it is very active in a man. In a woman, this chakra is in the receiving mode. You know, when I read this, I couldn't help but think uh, uh, maybe this is also connected to uh, in the New Testament uh, where they talk a lot about uh, the women not teaching or the women mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, not 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 speaking in in in, in uh, the public forum, the gatherings. Right. Like, yeah, right. and I was like, maybe there's a connection. Uh, well, what do you, what do you think? This is interesting. It is very interesting, <laughs> and that was another thing this lady kept telling me: your throat chakra is weak. Well, I grew up listening to people. I I grew up listening. It was a man's culture. I we would listen, and I learned a lot of things just listening. You know. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let's say you went out on a date with somebody. Now let's do two scenarios. Let's say one of them, you know, you're talking and, and she's, she's just listening. She's finding what you're saying just fascinating. She's listening to you and, and, you know, just like really, really enjoying the conversation. Now think of how you feel in that situation. How, what kind, how would you feel in that situation? Well, she's talking. She's talkative. No, you're, you're talkative. I'm, you're the I'm, one that's, you're talking, and she's listening, and she's really enjoying the things you're saying. Maybe you're saying you're, you're funny. She's laughing. You know, you're talking to her. Right, right. And she's you, responding. Now, now switch it to uh, where she's talking all the time, and you can't, can't get a word in edgewise. How right. do you feel? Tell me, tell me how you feel in this one or this one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's you know, this is a great question. This is a great question, uh, and maybe I'm I'm different and unique. I don't know, but on a date or not, just out, out, out to dinner, or whatever. We could be in a relationship, but we're out to dinner or just a, a date with, with someone I met. Right? I've always mm -hmm. been the type to listen. I listen more. I want to know about them. You know, I want to know about them. I want to know how they communicate. I want to hear their story. Uh, I will tell bits and pieces of me, but I love listening, you know, to stories and get to know the history. Now, if we're in a relationship or, or, or even dating, right, just dating, I don't want a woman who's very talkative to everyone in public or <laughs> yeah, I don't want that, but yeah. talkative with me. Is that, is that weird? <laughs> you know, I think we're getting into more than the chakras because again, uh, you know, <laughs> again, your, your astrology plays into that, you know, what you're uh -huh. comfortable with, how much, I don't know. I've tried to figure out the throat chakra one <laughs> That one just seems so unique. I mean, yeah. I love listening to people too, but then, then uh, when it gets to the point where I feel safe with them, right. then I, I, I'm, I, I can just open up and talk. But I still like to listen. I still want to hear their feedback. Right. So again, right. again, maybe, maybe the only way that a woman can ping on those male chakras is if she actually feels safe with the male if he's in the power, his power in those male chakras. I don't know. It's right. a very interesting uh, thought. <laughs> right, right. It is. It is. Um, I know this is going <laughs> to, I'm going to get some feedback in the comments. I think hey, that's fine. We want feedback, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think we could be playing with fire. It could be potentially dangerous if, uh, a woman is very talkative amongst a bunch of men. 
Uh-huh. Right? Um I think it, I could think I think it'd be uh it could show as a weakness because men are analyzing. And if she likes to hear herself talk a lot, uh you know, men are watching and they're like, Okay, there's there's the loophole. There's the weakness right there. So so what do you think okay. So so what you said again is that the male or the on the male, the throat chakra is positive, right? And the mm-hmm. female it's a negative? Correct. So so would that show would that show an imbalance in the chakras? Would that show an insecurity beings that if she's a female and her her throat chakra is polarized the wrong way? Do you think that's where the loophole is? Because now they're seeing that there's a weakness there. So that's probably an insecurity, right? Yeah, I mean, just from my experience, I'm not saying every woman. Right. From my experience, uh, the loudest woman, the woman that had to be heard and seen, had a lot of insecurity. Right. Had a lot of insecurity. Uh, and when you got to know them, they were really sensitive. Mm-hmm. And, and, and wanted, wanted attention. They really crave for the intention of one man, but mm-hmm. they were not getting it. And so they expressed this in other ways to get attention. But yeah. these were some of the, these were some of the weakest women, women I've come across. The third eye, the third eye chakra, positive pole or giving mode in female. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. Negative pole and receiving mode in male body. The sixth chakra is very active in a woman and is in the giving mode. The world knows the maximum of its healers to be women as they possess psychic powers. That's why in the earlier times we used to refer to the women as the oracle that shows the path to man. This chakra in a man is merely in the receiving mode. Wow, the third eye, that's associated with the woman. So now what you were talking about, so how would that associate with the man stimulating her? <laughs> I mean, the, isn't the mental connected to the third eye or is it something different? Well, um, yeah, that's that's something, right? So... That's something because I don't I don't know if if men put that at the top of the list where they say I want an intelligent woman. But women definitely say they want an intelligent woman. So maybe that third eye has to be stimulated. Now I don't know I know men don't want you know a, a, an ignorant woman, right? A, an unintelligent woman. But women intentionally say they want an intelligent like that's one of the, the things he has to be is intelligent uh they're stimulated by that uh so maybe that third eye is stimulated by a man you know who can uh who can so, treat you know, him. okay okay that that made me think of something else so very likely a woman's definition of intelligent is a whole lot different than a man's definition of intelligent mm. Very, li- very, very likely, very likely. <laughs> so, what do you see? What do you see as intelligent in a man? I guess, yeah. Hmm. Basically, he has ideas out of the box. He thinks for himself. He's not manipulated by governmental systems around him, or if somebody says, "Yay, I'm gonna just do it." Right. He sits back and thinks for himself. And he's not going to be controlled by somebody else's thoughts. But on the other hand, he's not hard headed because we all have ideas. He's open to ideas, but his to me true intelligence is where you can you can get because we all have pieces to the puzzle. I say it's like it's a great big puzzle and, and each of us is one of the pieces. 
And if we bring all of our pieces to the table, we'll create the whole puzzle and it's gonna be wholeness. He is able to look here and look here, but he doesn't take, let's say somebody's you know, speaking on something. He's able to intelligently pull the pieces from that, that he needs to build his goal but he's not going to take the whole thing with the unnecessary. He's going to go in there with a big strainer, so to speak, and strain out the stuff he doesn't need, throw it away, keep the other stuff. Right. And how I believe it's supposed to work is those ideas that he has. He pings them against a feminine energy, whatever it is. It can be his mother, his sister, his colleagues. It doesn't matter. He pings them against a feminine energy because intuitively, she's able to see the third eye is your visionary she's able to see okay we might run into this we might run into this maybe we should you know set this in right. place first or set this in place and set this in place right and right. then gives it back with the vision added to it where there is no vision the people perish that is where there is no third eye activation so now you look at that there were most of our indigenous cultures were matriarchal societies simply on that one aspect alone the intuition right uh the men were the warriors the protectors of the tribe but the women were the the they led through the intuition part of it not they were the oracle. I don't know if led is even the way, but they were the seers they were the ones right. that could see the vision they had the vision of right. what you know down the road long term whatever right. um very interesting. I, I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, a woman, a woman can see a man's potential before he can most times. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And that's the thing, um, you know, I've, I've ran into in, in my line of work and things like that all the time is I can literally see, I can see, you know, I'll hear a man we have this little piece, this little piece, and I can see something huge he could build. Um, but he doesn't see it. And there's no way I can get it across the, the vision to him. I mean, I can share bits and pieces, but it's like, he's not, okay, now he's not intelligent enough to get what we're saying, to get that right. when we try to share with him the vision. And to me, that's submission, submitting the vision. To me, that's true submission. When you actually bring the vision you hear you see what he's trying to do you see the huge potential of what he could do what he could be but he's not moving in that and a lot of you know men tend to be hard-headed which is not intelligent and right. they're not going to hear what you say when you speak okay look at this you know i can see this wow i can see this oh no i don't need you to over here you know okay no you you know <laughs> whatever right it's just an imbalance of those those chakras you know the the positive and negative right I, I i totally agree and i, I think that's where the help make comes in mm -hmm. and I, I think people have uh, a missed uh conception of what a helpmate is i look at it as the man he, he comes as he is right he, he's a protector provider he's a warrior he, he's all that but the woman says she's looking him over she's analyzing him <laughs> yeah and she's like yeah, I, I, he, he, this needs to be, he, he has a weakness right here. He has an mm -hmm. opening right here. And it's not to embarrass him uh, no. or, 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 or exploit him. It's to cover him, to, to cover him and, and, it, it, and be it, his it blind, really protect is. his blind side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really is. And that's, that, that's literally what it feels like. You know, you see what they can be and you see where there, there could be a, a danger of something coming in and messing up what they're wanting to do. Um, and that's and, and you know, being vulnerable enough to actually share that, knowing that he's, he might get mad at you. That's true submission that I feel like that's true submission, submitting your vision, what you actually see mm -hmm. to him, even knowing that he might get mad and reject you and whatever. Right. It's hard. It's very hard to do that, especially yeah. if you're dealing with a man that has a lot of ego. It's very hard to to be willing to, you know, you literally lay down your, you know, you literally lay yourself down to be, you know, trampled on if, if he doesn't like what your what you see through the visionary. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, and uh, and brothers, let me tell you, the brothers listening, 
there are a lot of men that we see that are great throughout history uh, and, and currently that have weaknesses that are not always exposed until they die. But they've had women in their lives that have covered them and filled those mm -hmm. holes. Um, I was working, I was watching a documentary on uh, Nat King Cole. And this guy was a suave <laughs> brother, articulate. I mean, everything was just pristine. Yeah. The, the way he, you know, slim fit, like everything. Um, and watching this documentary, I discovered that his wife dressed him. I always thought that he just had this, <laughs> this neck, this eye. Right. But right. She, she's like, no, you need to dress this way. And you need to wear a bow tie. And she taught him how to tie a bow tie. And she was his stylist. But no one knew this. I learned this through the documentary. And mm -hmm. there's stories like that throughout history where some men lack confidence. And they had a woman behind them to say, no, you can do this. No, you, you're going to win this office or, right. or whatever it right. is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they saw it. And if you read uh, Proverbs 31, that was one of my favorite ones reading when I was a child, believe it or not. I just love to read that because it spoke to who I really am, who we as, as women really are. There's nothing that we would love more than to see our man, like it says, uh, her, her, um, her husband is known in the gates when he sits with mm. the rulers of the land. There is nothing that makes us feel happier than being back here in the shadows, watching him be successful, sitting in the gate, speaking with the rulers. It, there's nothing that feels better. I can't even explain to you how that feels <laughs> to be able to see him literally fly and be able to, you know, right. you know, be, be behind the scenes and help in whatever way. Maybe he comes back from sitting with the rulers and he's feeling a certain way. Maybe things right. went wrong in there, but you literally can, like you said, cover him to where you strengthen those spots to where he can just keep on moving forward and, and do the work that he's cut out to do. It, it's, I don't know that I, I always uh, read that and thought that was just the most beautiful thing ever, you know? Um. Now in the seventh chakra, uh, they, they call it a thousand petals of lot of us, of lot us flower uh, we're gonna say the crown oh, chakra yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, the sahastra the, the crown chakra positive pole or giving mode in the female body negative pole or receiving mode in male body the seventh chakra is where the positive and negative poles merge and only pure consciousness remains so to grow as a balanced human being and go deep in your spiritual search is very important to find a balance of energy in each chakra. And if you feel that some chakras are less activated and some more overactivated, then it is advisable to practice chakra breathing meditation for 21 days. In our Tantra hmm. Nectar workshops, we are, uh, that's something else. Okay. So this is the crown. Yeah, so, this so is the crown. You, so are you saying the top two are both feminine chakras, the third eye and the one above the crown? Are they both feminine? Yeah, that's what it, uh, positive pole, given mode and female. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because see, the the source energy or the God energy is love. Love is a, a feminine energy. Huh. So apparently we're we're actually in the body on six chakras three male and three female but when they merge properly then we're going to be the whole yes. which is love which is that top oh this is interesting or they call it the violet flame they say that it's the the uh secret of the white gold that the whole perfection of of you know the yin yang wow that's a that's a beautiful thing um it makes me wonder if if we're conscious of this, these chakras, and we put in the mm -hmm. work, there should be no reason, if both people are putting in the work, there should be no reason for separation. I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I don't see a reason for separation. 
again, we're putting where in the no, work. Where there's no vision, the people perish. We're not seeing, you know, we haven't seen, we haven't focused on what exactly is making us, you know, at odds with each other. Right. Hmm. Wow. And so we got to be conscious of the energy we're taking in and putting out. And we got to be uh, aware that something's off. Yeah, something's Ooh. off. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on through, through your mind? I'm just thinking that this is very deep and this is something that, that you know, we, we really need to uh, put out there in a big way for people to practice. And, you know, even the fact of if somebody's feeling rejected, that feeling of rejection, you need to kind of go through and, and check your chakras. If you're a female, check the female chakras. Where are you weak? Right. If you're a male, check the male chakras. Where are you weak? What can I do to strengthen them? And there's even, um, there's even subliminals on YouTube that you can play to strengthen certain chakras. You can play them all night while you sleep. Um, we have so many tools, you know, we can activate those chakras and, and make, strengthen them. And uh, there's, there's a scripture that talks about strengthening the things that remain. And uh, I, I just think that that's so important for us to, take a hold of what we know these few little tips and start going with it. And we, like we said earlier, we have to un unravel these strands from somewhere. And I think this is an excellent starting point to, to yeah. understand. I think so. I think so. Yeah. This would be a cool, this would be a cool workshop. Uh, very. I've, I've enjoyed it. I'm, I appreciate yeah. you bringing this. This has been very interesting. Uh, yeah, before we close out, though, I want to I wanted to touch on something very briefly. Um, I've been doing a lot of reading lately. And I discovered um, that some people believe we have, um, I want to say brains, um, control systems, I, I would say, control systems in the body. And the main three, or or say the only three, or or are the uh, the heart, uh, the actual brain, and the gut, the stomach. And I was like, wow, you know, the stomach, the gut, then the intuition. And if your stomach is off, if the gut is off, if your if your intestines are off, anything is going on, your digestion system is off. Man, that can really mess up your, your day, your life, uh, and a corrupt mind can do the same, a corrupt heart. So I think those are the three things we really got to focus on. Uh, of course, we want to focus on the seven chakras, of course, but I think the three most important things is the mind, the heart, and the gut. I, I really do. I think we would uh, relieve a lot of dis-ease, disease, mm -hmm. if we, we focused on, on not only the seven chakras, but in particular, those three components. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that? I love it. Yeah. I did research on that years ago, and I studied the Hebrew. I, I um, Hebrew is the original language. In fact, I just watched a documentary uh, yesterday that was talking about when they came here to America, they found all the people here, the indigenous peoples, their main language was Hebrew. Mm -hmm. This is what they were talking. Now this, I, I'll share this documentary because it is incredible. Wow. Anyway, wow. Um, it, it's talking about the history and, and even how Kansas has a spot that was known, it was the most sacred spot in the entire world and what has happened to it. Uh, Anyway, I'll send it to you. But anyway, so you go into the original Hebrew or the, the, the Bible that we have today, and it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Again, that was one of my favorite things as a child, because I, I just, you know, I, <laughs> I've always been super curious. I wanted to know, what does God look like? What, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I always would read that and think, hmm. Okay, I'm 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 gonna be really a good child, so because I really want to see. <laughs> right, right. But when I started reading Hebrew and studying, I found that 
what it said is blessed are the pure in stomach. The word heart in Hebrew said stomach. Right. And when you started delving into it, the stomach is the seat of the soul. That's where your soul enters into your body yeah. in your mother's womb through the umbilical cord. The navel. Yeah, the, some people the, say navel, yeah. Right. The gut-brain connection is huge. Yes. Now, you can say your mind comes first. No, it doesn't. I don't believe that at all. Your mind can be all screwed up, but if you actually start correcting the gut bacteria, yes. make you some water kefir. I mean, I, I have water kefir on my counter. But even that's alone. That's so simple to make. You can buy water kefir grains online and just you just add put sugar water in there, and it literally cultures it. Even things like that. You can see anybody when you start to balance that gut, their whole personality changes. I oh, mean, the whole personality. Yeah. You yeah. can have a cranky, crabby, angry person, and they become somebody you don't even know. All right. Correct. Because Correct. there's there's twice as many brain neurons or neurons in the gut as there are on the brain. At least twice. It's, it may yeah. be greater than that. I think it's greater, yeah. Yeah, it, it's greater. And there's a few, and there's some in the heart as well, but they still ping back to the gut, which yeah. makes sense because that's your soul, solar plexus, the soul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, I find it interesting. Yeah. We, we have to understand that these three components help, help protect us, but also help us push forward. Yes. In, in life, you know, uh, so. I mentioned a situation where uh, I was going to, well, I did come in a partnership with, in a club with these ladies, and I won't get, go on into it, but the only thing that protected me was my gut, because my heart wanted to do this. I had been wanting to do this for years, mm -hmm. and my mind, I wanted it so badly, right? But although my mind was telling me to watch, watch. But then my gut was saying, watch, and then my gut was saying, there's something off. There's something yeah. off. Yeah. It was in my gut, and mm -hmm. I was correct. Like, a lot of times, that's off or blocked in people, their gut, their intuition. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we got to get that open, guys and, and ladies. Yeah. We got we to get that heart working right. We got to get that mind working right but also that gut. And I think the gut comes first of the three. I, I think honest. so. I think so. I mean, when I healed myself of the diseases I had, I had cancer at 24 and then a massive heart attack at 28. Oh. I had to start, I had to start with the gut and I'm telling you, it was a long, long journey, but you have to start with the gut and it, and, and it, I mean, you, you can go into a lot of different things and they talk about the gut and where, you know, death begins in that area. That's where death begins and, and the death, translates to the mind and the heart and everything else yes yeah. so you know one one thing that is very helps helps you rectify very quick is fasting and there's one type of fast that that i for myself have found that is incredible it's it's way more effective than the typical type of fasting and that's uh what they call a 24 hour hard dry fast mm -hmm. You don't eat or drink at all. You don't. You try not to let water touch your body any more than possible. Maybe wash your hands and stuff. But you, your body actually goes into a mode where, for the male, it increases the human growth hormone two thousand percent increase in twenty four hours. For the female, it's like fifteen hundred percent increase in twenty four hours. It is incredible. Literally, what happens is your body goes into this phase where. If you're not putting any water in there during a fast, your body will go after any damaged or dying cells or, or cells that have, you know, messed up when they were um, breaking off right. and it will, they will literally go after those cells. They will burst the cell wall, take the water out of the cell wall to hydrate itself and then eat the cell wall for protein. Wow. So if you get into, if you get it, that's literally the fountain of youth guys. I mean, literally how I reverse my cellular age from, you know, 80, 80 years old down to 24 in a number of years is that because what happens is the body is literally 
reversing your age every time you do that. And you can do a 24 hour fast every couple of weeks, or you can do it once a week if you want or, or less, whatever. Right. But it's important to do it, especially after you hit 40, because, you know, our bodies are exposed to so many chemicals and things like that. And so the cells are always mutating and it's the mutated cells that turn into disease or cancer or things like that. So it's really important to give your body the chance to destruct those cells. And when it removes those cells, then it creates healthy new cells. And I'm wow. telling you, I am telling you that 24 hour hard dry fast, your third eye will literally be buzzing. I mean, I mean, you, you get downloads, you get, <laughs> it's like crazy. That's what I wow. noticed the most is the spiritual. Wow. It's like, even even colors that you look around even colors start taking on a little different uh the spectrum is different it's it's amazing and you feel wow. for me i get so much energy on that kind of a fast now if i try to do a water fast where i'm putting water in mm. it's not the same at all and it's way harder because you're putting something in your stomach and then your stomach feels the weight of it and it's going oh i need food right. whereas right. if you're doing a hard dry fast you didn't put anything in there. So your body's just fine. It's not even, I don't know. Right. I can do that and not get thirsty or hungry at all. But if wow. I take even any water, then it's like triggering the thirst and the hunger and all that. So yeah. I got to try that. I, I've yeah. never, I've never heard of that. I got, well, maybe yeah. I have, I got to try it though. I've never done it. Yeah. There's a, I'll, I'll try to send you a, a link. There's a, a doctor, Dr. Mindy Perez on YouTube that actually goes, breaks it down in detail. What happens in your body in 24 hours when you're doing a hard drive fast? She has a, a Facebook page. I think that's called uh, the resetters group. Hmm. And she, they're actually, you know, doing this to reset the whole body. Wow. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah. Wow. Be yeah. I'm sure I will. Yeah. This was, this was good. This was interesting. Uh yeah, this is interesting. I think we got to really focus on these chakras. I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah, I think we hit. I mean, we you hit. know, really the whole body health, you know, mind, body, and spirit. It's just mm -hmm. like, there's just, you know, we, we've been fed so many lies on so many levels, you know, that we have to untangle. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> mentioning lies, this, this is something that I've thought about, too, I wondered about. You know, I was raised in the church. I don't, I don't know. I've always been in the church, right? Until I, yeah. uh, until I don't know. I was born in the church, and you know, <laughs> until I was there like three times a a week, most times. Right. Uh, me too. Me too. All, yeah. Uh -huh. All all summer. Yeah. But um, until I went to the military, you know, I I stopped going, and then uh. You know, I just I just got away and then I would go back periodically. But once I started studying the last 10 years, it's really doing my own studying and branching out. It really opening my mind to different things. And, and sometimes I wonder, were these pastors lying to us intentionally or did they just not know? But then I look at some pastors that have high profiles that I, I think are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this guy has to know. He has to know. I I, I just don't, you know, so I, I wonder about that. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen uh, the last Immortal Minds video about uh, Don't Let Your Light Be Damned, where he was really going in and talking about the religions, mm. talking about, but that made me sit back and think too. I was thinking about that this week about, you know, my brother's one of those. <laughs> oh, those. Wow. Um, but well, my I, brother's a preacher too. My brother's a pastor. Yeah. Too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I don't think my, I don't think my brother, I don't think my brother really knows when I really, uh, I don't think he does. Um, I don't know. Yeah. You don't, so you don't, you don't want him to know. Well, don't you don't, know. yeah, you don't, you don't want to think he knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just kind of depends on the speed that people wake up. I believe, you know, there are, there are people that are still 
in a lot of darkness that just don't but I see people waking up left and right so I'm hoping that he's waking up <laughs> you know what right. I mean yeah and the reason the reason I think uh some of these guys know or women too uh know is because <clears throat> we all uh evolve and what we thought mm -hmm was something wasn't something right that's right. that's with all of us i've never heard a pastor say uh congregation people i know i preached this i know i taught this 10 years ago five mm. years ago 30 mm -hmm. years ago but i have a different understanding now mm. yeah you're right so you're this right. is this is where i'm at now this is what came to me in my consciousness or subconsciousness mm -hmm. now, but I thought I was right 10 years ago, but now I have a different understanding. I've never yeah. heard of, so <laughs> what is that? That's true. Is it ego? What do we have to protect here? Exactly. I mean, I'll be the first one to say, oh yeah, you know, two years ago, I thought this and this, but um i i learned otherwise and i'm you know that's not the way it is anymore you know, right I can't say that anymore right right so wow. it's like okay so it's either ego <laughs> which is wrong or you are intentionally misleading or, right. or yeah oh boy <laughs> yeah i i see where i see your point because everybody, wow. everybody has different revelations and different understandings over the years. Exactly. I don't yeah. care who you are. Right. I, like, the, the, the way I raised my first child is totally different than I raised my last child. Oh, well, tell me about it. Oh, because, my goodness. Yeah, because I have a different understanding. Right. About, yeah. And my, my, oh, my, my ex-wife, my ex-wife even called me soft. So you, you've gotten soft. It's not. It's not that I got soft. I'm a different parent. I'm not. Right. I'm not. I'm not 21. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm 30. <laughs> I'm thir at the time. I'm 30 something. Right. So I'm, I hadn't gotten soft. I have a different understanding. Mm -hmm. And so the way I parented at 21, I, I've grown. There's nothing right. wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> But but I don't hear pastors doing that. And so mm. this is why I think it's intentional. Yeah, that's a real interesting thought. Because they would have to go through the process of thinking, okay, I've seen this, but what are they going to think if I say this, right? Right. But I think it was, if it is ego and not intentional, I think it would be so powerful for them to do so, so someone to do something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a great that's a great teaching moment. You're right. Wow. That man would be so powerful if I was in a congregation to hear a pastor say that. I mean I'm like I'd be like wow, wow. that would make me feel so comfortable you and know? so confident right. about about growing and, and and just elevating and admitting to uh -huh. myself or my kids or my wife. I know I said this, I taught this, but that's, that's not it. Right. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this video and past videos, you can show your appreciation by going to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate at least $1 per week. That's it, $1 per week. I serve as the VP on the Board of Directors for Angel to Angel. We provide educational and mentorship services for the youth. We provide assistance for the elderly, the homeless, and the mentally ill. Now, I know content creators want you to hit their cash out, and I don't knock that. I certainly won't reject that. But what I want you to do for me is go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate at least $1 per week. That's it. One dollar per week. As always, love. Peace.